All right, we have a suspension that goes up and down. That is really exciting, but I screwed up. It's the day that I have been waiting for, and I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for. It's the day that we are going to start building our SLA suspension on the car. It's something that I have been working on for a while. There's other videos going over the design and the geometry that I have going into this uh, SLA build, which is just a double wishbone front suspension. Uh, so if you want to look at those, check those out. Uh, I'll have a playlist for all the front suspension upgrades that I've done to the car. But for this video, we're to the point of actually building it out. I am super excited that I've been waiting for this time for a long time now. Um, I've been researching the SLAs for a long time and pretty much they've been out of reach um, financially, but build wise, we can do it. Uh, it's still not cheap, don't get me wrong, it is still not a couple hundred dollar thing, but the plates only cost, you know, 20 to 40 bucks to get cut out, but the design and the other components start to jack up the price a little bit. So I'll have a video later on that goes over the whole cost of how much it actually will, the final cost for this, but for right now, we're working on the car. So I got the, the fender off so we can kind of better see what is going on. So I got these plates in. These are ones that I had shown that it, I designed and I got them uh, cut by Send Cut Send. So really nice. Uh, they're, I got quarter inch for two of the plates and then I think this one is like 0.188. So this will be my bottom one. So they'll just sandwich in here like this. And then this plate will get welded on to the side here. And this is the plate that has the adjustment holes on it. So as we, when we pull bolt on our upper control arm, we can put it at different angles, which will change our geometry. We can get more any dive, caster, camber, things like that. But I need to first figure out what we can do, what we need to do on the car. So it has this pinch weld right here, which I knew about, and I've seen other designs that kind of just kind of go, will go around that. Um, I've also seen some that do something with that pinch weld to get rid of it. So I haven't quite decided yet if I'm going to cut it and bend it down, bang it down with a hammer, or cut it off and maybe weld the two pieces back together to stiffen this back up. I'm kind of leaning towards cutting it off and stitch welding it back up. I think that would be better if I just bend it down, bang it down with a hammer. Uh, it still has some thickness there and I can't put this flat up against the, the frame anyways. It needs to step off of there some to be able to put uh, my mounting bolt. So I'll either have the bolt with the nut on the inside or the bolt coming through and put the nut on the outside. I haven't quite decided on that design either. If I put it from going from the inside, I'd have to then pull this off every time we want to do adjustment. If I go from the inside, I'm limited on how much I can have that plate in because these holes are slotted in there so I can adjust it in and out. That's not how I'm planning to do my main adjustment for any camber. Uh, camber adjustment will be done with uh, shims in between this plate and the upper control arm, but I wanna be able to kind of get that placed in or out at a good location. So that's why I did put a little bit of adjustment into the, the plate itself, but I will get that figured out and check back in with you guys in a second. I decided to cut off the pinch weld. It will just make it, I think, easier than trying to bend it down. So I need to trim back a little bit more and then I will kind of weld out that seam, but I will do that later. We can kind of 
look now at the, the mounting system though. It's looking like it's gonna work out pretty well. A uh, few things we can go over with the design that I've incorporated of this. On here is this notch. So I put this notch in here so I can basically push this back up to that notch and that will basically set where this sits uh, forward and aft and that will make it to where both sides are the, the same. One thing that I wish I also incorporated was maybe just like a little tab coming off of there that fits into these ones that will kind of hold this guy um, vertically better. So I'd have something that holds it back back uh, forward and aft with this slot and then something that holds it uh, vertically with uh, the little tab, but I can basically get this lined up and then get it uh, tacked on there and then tack in the other side. It's not too big of a deal to try to get this all square, but that is one thing that I incorporated in here was this little um, tab or a slot or something like that. And then here are the holes for the, the different bolts. So I have four different holes that I can then change the height of my A-arm and then the angle of my A-arm so I can adjust the, the roll center and then also the, the anti-dive. So those are some things that were incorporated into this, uh, this bracket and then there's also a slot on all these to move this plate in and out if I need to. Um, right now it's basically pulled all the way out that's to allow any room behind here, but I could also push it in some to get more camber if I need to. So I'm gonna get these kind of tacked on and then we can start fitting up the upper control arm. So we have a suspension that goes up and down. This is super exciting, but I screwed up. There's a disconnect between the model and the, the real world. As uh, they often say in engineering, it works in the model, so it should work in real life, but that isn't always true. And in this case, I screwed up somewhere. Uh, I don't have the proper camber that is shown in the model. Right now, I have a lot of positive camber and it's not really gaining any negative as I move up. It basically stays the same, which is also kind of cool. It doesn't change really at all as it moves up. So whatever you put in statically, it stays, but we need to have some camber gain. Uh, so there's something different between the car and the model. I've done a lot of uh, measuring to try to figure out where, and so far I have not really been able to find it, but it's some small little, probably an angle or something. So I did my best to model up the, the spindle and the control arm and this ball joint adapter as best as possible. I modeled up the upper control arm too. I'm pretty confident in that. This one is pretty simple. It's easy to get measurements off of. So I'm pretty sure that my model of the upper control arm is accurate. The lower control arm is a little bit more difficult to accurately model and then the spindle is really difficult also. It's got a lot of different angles and things like that. So somewhere probably in this area or the lower ball joint one, I think is where I'm a little bit off. I've tried to do some measurements and things are looking okay, but obviously something is drastically different from my model because I should have uh, in this configuration like negative two degrees of camber and I'm at, uh, I think when I looked close to uh, like five degrees or four degrees of positive. So there's something drastically different. So what does that mean? How are we gonna fix it? So as I've said in the other videos, I am not a design or suspension engineer. So this was probably bound to happen. And it's okay, it's why we're doing this is to, as a learning process to show that you can't just go slap on an upper control arm and it everything works. You gotta make a full package. And I was hoping to be able to do it in different phases. I was hoping to be able to make it work with the stock lower control arm, but 
obviously we can't. So what am I going to do to fix this is figure out a new lower control arm. Um, probably going to build one, but there are options out there to purchase one possibly. That is if we can figure out the right length that it actually needs to be, but probably I'm just going to build one. It's going to be a fairly simple design. We'll do a rod end that comes off with uh, like a square tubing. We'll brace it up, do a, a, a weld in ball joint uh, screw in adapter there, and then uh, a rod coming off the back to the, the back point. So pretty simple. They have ones that you can purchase, so I'll just need to look into that a little bit too. But for the most part, we're going to have to redo the lower control arm or build our own lower control arm I should say. As far as the the K member, I'm probably still going to have to raise up that suspension point. I don't want to get into the point of having to build my own K member quite yet. I do want to do that but building a whole K member that you got the suspension, you got the steering, and you got the engine all that need to be mounted in the right location. So it's a lot more uh, technical and difficult. Uh, I probably have to would build up a jig, which I probably have to build up a jig also for the lower control arm most likely. But for the K member, I would definitely need to try to figure out how to build up a, a jig for that, which we'll do that in the, the future, you know, maybe next off season or maybe during the year. We'll see, because I do have two K members here. So I do have one that I could use up as uh, to make up the jig. This is what I was using to get all the suspension measurements off of. And I did kind of check that this, this K member is the same as the one that was removed to make sure that those measurements all align because I wasn't sure exactly what car that one came out of. But all the suspension measurements are the same. And as far as I could find, um, the suspension measurements, the K member suspension points have not really changed throughout the years. Maybe in the early Fox years, but the later Fox years, SM95s and uh, the new edge, they were all really in the same place. Uh, just the steering did uh, move up and down, but the suspension points all stayed the same. One other point that I didn't mention on this upper control arm mount. So I did make this side bracket uh, side plate, I should say, uh, a little bit shorter than what I needed to. And that creates a really good valley that I can then uh, weld into. So I don't need to go bevel any of the edges. I have a really good valley that is going to get really good penetration onto the, the two parts. So that is something that I didn't mention earlier when I was talking about the design of the upper um, mount, I guess, upper bracket. And <laughs> with that, uh, we'll conclude this video as I need to figure out my next steps. But we have a suspension that goes up and down. Uh, I have a few tweaks to do to my upper control arm bracket for the next design. As I said, I only made enough for this one side. So I'll do those tweaks for the, the next side, but I'm pretty confident that it will work as I uh, intended. So. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. We got a lot more coming up on this car, obviously. So we'll see you in the next one. Later.